in. There we go. All right. Um, and then I just wanted to also let you know that. Oh, hello. Welcome. Well, it took me a while because it kept saying that um, there was no connection. I'm at the library. Oh. So I had to figure that out. So it took me took me a while to figure that out. <laughs> no worries. That's all right. Okay. So welcome. We're actually just getting started. So you didn't miss anything yet. Okay. Well, it looks like there's only myself. I sent a message out. but. Okay. No worries. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So um, I just wanted to let you know that we're going to also upload the recording of this um, event to our TRL YouTube channel um, to give anybody else who wants to watch it a chance to do that. Um, and so I just want to say welcome to everybody. Um, this is our 2022 TRL Online Friends Forum. And my name is Kristen. I'm TRL's Public Experiences Coordinator. And I'll be your host today along with Christy Silvey, who is our Programming Coordinator. And um, we have a couple of fun hours of conversation for everybody planned for today. And so we'll begin with some words from um, our Houston County trustee, Mary Beth Harrington. And then there'll be a Q&A with Kendra, our deputy director. And after that, we'll open things up to further conversation. And I've got some topics um, that you can discuss if you need suggestions. And if we have enough people, we may also do some breakout rooms um, with those discussion topics um, in different rooms. But if we want to, we can also just um, have some conversation all together in one room. All right, and so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Mary Beth. And actually, okay. I'm going to stop sharing. Okay, <laughs> there we go. Thank oh, you. Wow. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. My name, as Kristen said, is Mary Beth Harrington. I was appointed to the Timberland Regional Library trustees as the representative or one of two representatives from Thurston County in January. However, I am um, I feel like I represent the entire community of all 29 libraries and I'm slowly making my way through getting a chance to visit all the libraries and meet everybody. We we just moved here from Texas two years ago. So um, I'm still getting to, to know the area and know all the different libraries and know where everybody is. Um, but just so you know, I'm not new to, um, well, I'm new to this area. I'm not new to libraries. Um, I do not have my MLS, my master's in libraries. I'm not a librarian. I like to say, but we gave up the industry our firstborn, as some of you know. Um, our daughter is director of library services at a British boarding school in Shanghai. So think of it as Hogwarts in China. <laughs> and so, so she's a librarian. Most of my friends are librarians. And I have worked with libraries for the last 25 years. I started with the Dallas Public Library where I was director of volunteer services. And so in addition to those type of responsibilities, I was also responsible for the bookstore at the local downtown library, as well as the book sale. And I know that many of you um, do conduct book sales. So you kind of, you know about those. This one was a lot different, I think, than some of the ones that you might be familiar with. Um, the book sale at the Dallas Public Library was three days, three full days. It covered four city blocks. It generated about $75,000 in revenue, give you an idea. And when I, prior to my starting there, we had a small cadre of friends who worked on it, as well as the staff. And as soon as I got um, hired for the position, they decided that they weren't going to use staff anymore. They were only going to use volunteers. So I had to recruit over 500 volunteers to work at this. And while you might say, well, great, then just contact all the friends. Well, the, the difference between 
here and there is that the Dallas Public Library friends like to write checks. And that's really nice that they write checks, but they don't work. <laughs> so I really appreciate every one of you and all that you do. And I understand, in fact, at the uh, at the in-person forum, I was meeting some, some uh, friends who were talking about how they were lugging boxes of books and what they were doing. And so I completely, I completely understand um, the challenges you have for what you're doing with the friends groups and, and, and different things like that. So post working with the Dallas Public Library, I worked with nonprofits, but I also did, again, continue to work with libraries through the Texas Library Association. I spoke at their conference, I think, for 15 years. Um, traditionally, with friend, talking to friends and trustees, I find I'm in a unique position because I speak librarian, but I also speak uh, layperson. <laughs> So I was, I would go in and I would talk to the librarians about how to market their, um, their library and how to talk and try to engage people who may not, um, you know, be, be comfortable with coming to the library or may not be coming to the library on a regular basis. And then likewise, I worked with the friends. I worked with many, many different friends groups, helping them generate and increase their membership, helping them with their board uh, governance responsibilities and different things like that. So I bring that information and I tell you all that because I want to support you. So if you have any questions or any issues or challenges or anything that you want to, um, you know, pick my brain about, I'd be happy to help you out. That's that's kind of why I'm here and that's why I'm speaking today because I want you to know that I understand friends organizations, how they operate, some of the challenges that are involved with them, and I want to be there to help you. Likewise, I'm hoping that um, we can continue having these forums and that you can continue to advocate for the, the Timberland Regional Library. Obviously, we want you to advocate for your community library, but also for the entire system. We need you to speak up and to tell others about, about, um, about the TRL and everything that we're doing. Um, you know, I know that um, by advocacy, a lot of people think about it as going and speaking to your city leaders. And yes, we want that. We want to make sure that they're coming into the library, that they know what a valuable asset the library is to your community and how your community would be devastated if your library did not exist. That is crucial. But also making sure that you're telling your friends and neighbors. Too often we know People know that we do books. They might know that we do, you know, videos or CDs, and they might even know we do eBooks, but most people have no idea of the plethora of different programs and services that the library offers. Everything from printing to, um, to, the, to the library of things. And I know that Kendra is gonna talk about some of those today and you're going to, you can find out more by going to the website or going to, um, going to the newsletter. I hope that each of you are um, subscribed to the TRL newsletter. I hope that you are then, if you have a friend's newsletter that you're using information, you can get information on the media section of the website content that you can actually put in your newsletter, but also put it in your next door. That's one thing I have started to doing is putting information that I learn about the library in our next door, because that goes to a lot of people who don't necessarily know about the library. They're not getting the, the newsletter. They don't know about some of the new things. I was just talking the other day with a friend of ours, a neighbor of ours who lived across the street, and we started talking about libraries. And I started telling her some of the things that the that the library offers, and she had no idea. And so that's the thing is, is that even, even I, after hearing everything that Cheryl says and Kendra says and reading the newsletter, there's still a lot of things that I'm not aware of. So um, thank you, Kristen. She just posted on the chat that you can go to the media website and you can pull that information. So if you want to occasionally pull some of that information and put it on your next door column, include it in your faith in your friends face, uh, your uh, friends newsletter, include it on uh, Facebook or any kind of social media. That's kind of why it's there. If you're not quite sure what to write about, then just pull that information because we really want to make sure that everyone in your community, well, and all the communities of TRL are really aware of everything that the library offers because there really is something for everybody. 
but a lot of people don't know that. So we really need your help with that. So thank you so much for your advocacy. Thank you so much for your support. Um, please let me know if there's anything I can do to support you guys. And I thank you for taking the time to visit and be here today. Um, that's all I have to say. So thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mary Beth. Um, I really appreciate everything that you had to say. And now we'll go ahead and um, I'll let Kendra speak. Kendra is going to say some words and do a little Q&A session. Yes, I will say some words. Hopefully they're decent words. Thanks, Mary Beth. Um, so I'm going to piggyback a little bit. I just wanted to first start with a little piece of, of thanks because actually what Mary Beth has been saying is something that a lot of you are already doing. And I think sometimes, like she said, you just don't know that it's advocacy. So I want to just start by saying thank you for your support of our libraries. And that's not just financial. A big part of that actually is, is the advocacy piece. It's so important. Um, so an example I, I thought of was Anytime I see, and I, I, I do see a lot of what all of you do out there, actually. We look at Facebook pages and our library managers tell us all the great things that their friends are up to. And anytime I, I hear that, oh, they did a message on, on Facebook or they had a conversation about some really cool program that was going up with a neighbor, you know, they would talk to a neighbor about that. That's advocacy. Just selling a program to somebody else is super simple. So whenever you do those things, it's really impactful for us. Um, I hear our library managers talking about how much you support them and their staff publicly and privately, like during the pandemic, several friends groups provided moral support for our staff, right, and snacks, which also helps. Those things, while might, they might seem a little small, that's also advocacy. You're, you're telling our staff how much you appreciate them and that you know what they're doing, you trust them, you believe in the library, and that's really, really powerful. So I want to thank you for doing that as well. And that, of course, helps our staff be super excited to come to work every day as well. So some of the things uh, that you all have helped with, of course, is to move forward our strategic direction, which I know uh, most of you probably know that it, we're focused right now on equity, diversity and inclusion, um, sharing culture and encouraging intergenerational connection in local communities and, of course, serving children zero to five and their families, which I think it, we've seen a lot of those things have been getting, I feel like, more flashy headlines lately because we're a lot of that stuff's coming to fruition. And I'll talk about a few of those things that you might see in your libraries. So those focuses were identified by folks just like you in 2019 by our community members and our staff as places where we might have some gaps and some places we could really improve. And we've been working since 2020, again, with your support in many of these areas to help move forward those focus areas. So again, your advocacy efforts have helped with that too, because anytime you say, hey, all the things that libraries are doing for zero to five, they're so important, it's really great. That helps us emphasize that that focus area, we're still really on, on with that. It helps um, our community members understand that we're doing a really great thing. So I just wanna thank you, thank you for all of that. I won't go on forever because I could list it forever, just like we're doing on our Instagram. In case you haven't seen on our social media, there's these great shout outs to all of the friends groups and staff are saying really amazing things about you. So if you haven't seen them, please go look at it. I have just really enjoyed reading all of the things that a lot of them I didn't know. Um, for example, I didn't know that the, the Olympia Friends had funded Blu-ray players for um, folks to check out. That was new to me. That's really super awesome. Um, so thank you for doing that. And if you want some happy feel good moments, definitely go look at those social media threads and see what your other friend groups are up to as well. The other friend groups are up to. So that's what I have for, for all of you as a statement. Now, some of the things that are going to happen next year, I know Cheryl at the in-person talked about some of our big projects that are happening that we thought you all might want to know about because they're pretty exciting and we'd like for you to obviously talk them up and get excited about those and i'll share just a, a couple of those and then i mostly want to give time for you to ask questions um and i want to know what you're thinking about and what's interesting to you so some of the things we've been up to and that will continue are our library of things uh, which includes like those Blu-ray players I mentioned before, but there's fishing kits out there. Our Montesano Library will be expanding uh, to have some cookery items in the future. So we're really developing this idea of a library of things. Again, like Mary Beth said, we're not just books. We are so much more. And that's one way we can 
um, expand our collection. For early learning, we have early math backpacks going out. That's a, a great uh, partnership with our Capital STEM Alliance. That's really amazing and will continue. Um, the Hands-On Children's Museum has given us activity kits for kids in our libraries, and that's something that's really awesome. We'll have a Grow a Reader program that we'll be launching actually in November very soon, and that's a birth to six program with their caregivers. And the, everything will be in Spanish and English. It's a, just a way to encourage caregivers to be sharing books um, and materials with their, their young children. So that's really exciting. We have some capital improvement things that we are hoping will happen next year. Uh, we've got a, a ho hopefully we're going to be having a Mountain View, a new Mountain View Timberland Library. Um, we're working on the purchase of the land right now. And so if everything goes to plan, we'll have that breaking ground on that next year. Uh, the West Olympia Library is getting a little expansion. Lots of other libraries are getting refreshes and remodels. We're working really hard to make sure that our physical libraries are clean and safe and welcoming for our community so that there's, when they come in, they know where to find things and that there's seating for them and that everything is refreshed and looking really sharp because though we are a rural library district and sometimes rural libraries don't always have the best funding, um, we are a, a junior taxing district so we get to share all of our money and things and that means that we get to have our rural libraries looking really amazing and those communities deserve you all deserve those libraries so we want to make sure that your library is state of the art no matter what size of town um, it's in so those are some of the the bigger things that we're working on um, and i don't want to list everything because honestly we have so much going on and i know that your library managers will keep you updated throughout the year as well and you can always go to them to ask questions um, if you have any. So now I'm curious if you have any questions I might be able to answer. So if you have any questions, you can feel free to unmute yourself and ask them now. Sorry, I didn't know I got muted. <laughs> um, so I have a question. I didn't know um, that uh, Timberland, I don't do Instagram. I haven't done it for, I don't do, the only thing I do is Facebook and our friends page, I have a challenge with that because um, I'm not good at doing things with that word. Um, but uh, Instagram, um, probably haven't used it for who knows how long. Um, maybe 10, 12 years, whatever. It's, I, did, I used it for extremely short time, but um, so, so Timberland just has a page on Instagram. I don't know how it works. Yes, you're exactly right. We have a, a page and also many of our local libraries have their own Instagram pages as well. Uh, but you can look up, if, if you do get on Instagram and you want to look at that, you can just um, look for Timberland Regional Library. Yep, it'll be under yeah, that. You have to figure that out. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, I have enough, yeah, I'm not too, I can do a lot of internet stuff, but uh, a lot of other things I'm not, not good at. Well, and, and it's changing all the time. <laughs> And just real quick, where this is, I'm calling from Maysell, or talking from Maysell, Washington, or the Timberland Library. I worked uh, at um, for 28 years, so I've been retired for six now. At the Maysell Library as a library assistant, and then I I changed things. So, and I also worked. So I worked four days in Maysell, and I worked one day in Owaco, and then when. Um, the libraries had Sundays open. I did a rotation because I didn't have the full 40 hours then. Uh, on um, Sunday uh, with various people um, in Ocean Park. So, um, and real quick, my mother was a children's librarian in Akron, Ohio. My dad was a, uh, he had his master's and he was um, a library for 30 years in the city of Detroit, in the city. So. Um, so I come from a librarian, so I don't have a degree, but um, I honestly don't remember learning the Dewey Decimal System. I already knew it and, and how things are cataloged and organized. So I had all that without, 
I think I got taught, taught quite early. So, but another thing about me cell is um, in Pacific County, it is, so the school is uh, all one school and it approaches uh, part, some of Pacific County and um, I think it's, it would be not quite half of Wakaikan County. And so we, of that total from kindergarten through high school, we have about 327 students total. So we're very small. And just a real quick, Pacific County has about um, 20,500 people in it. And Wakaikan County has less than 5,000 people in the whole county, just to give you an overview. So, so we're a small area and um, yes, but everybody um, relies on the library here. Um, and uh, because the, uh, the, the friends, um, if need a purchase um, for a, a family that's in Wakaikum County, um, which they get a, um, I think it's a, I think it's a half a year or a year to be able to use the library for the whole family if if they have a child in school. Um, Sid, I think it was Sid Snyder was a senator a long time ago. He helped um, do something with to be able to do that with half of Wakaikum County to the top of KM, which is, um, if you've been on Highway 4, um, that's the divide from one side to the other. So, awesome. but we, we help our, our library, um, the manager, um, do a lot of things, a lot of programs. And we do have a book sale once a year, but we're very small. She's very appreciative of you. She sends you praises all the time. <laughs> so you, your uh, fame precedes you, I suppose. You know, Kristen, I don't know if it would be okay, but it would be really helpful for me if we just did some quick introductions so that I kind of know where everyone's from, if possible. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. We don't have too many people, so we can go ahead and go around and introduce ourselves and talk a little bit about, um, about who we are. So, um, yeah. Who would like to start? <laughs> well, I didn't, I have my name in front of me. It's Cheryl Hartline. And so I guess I was number one. <laughs> I was just going to say maybe Cheryl could start, but she already did. So. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Thank you for being the guinea pig, Cheryl. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. <laughs> well, I'll be number two if you want. My, um, my, Face shows Willie, but that's my husband's nickname. My name is actually Janice Disbro, and I'm the treasurer of the Friends of the Library up in Packwood. And um, I've been a friend of the library for, gosh, maybe 12 years. And um, yeah, enjoy our library very, very much. All right. Thanks, Thank Janice. You. I thought I saw Elizabeth's hand up, but I couldn't be sure. Yeah, it's up. <laughs> Great. Um, it's actually Betsy, Betsy Penoyer, and I'm from South Bend and treasurer of the Friends. Have been a member of the Friends for probably 35, 40 years. Um, my daughter-in-law, Jenny, is the manager of Raymond and South Bend. I'm in South Bend. Yeah, she's great. Um, that's it. Thank you. I see also Marilyn on my screen. I'm Marilyn Chintella. Um, I'm the president of uh, Chehalis, Friends of the Library. Great, thank you. How about, let's see, Helen is next on my screen. I'm Helen Happ. I'm from Montesano and um, our friends have, when I joined the friends, um, the average age of the ladies was in their 80s. There we go. So we had some serious rebuilding to do, and that would have been back in oh, a long time ago. <laughs> and uh, the support for our library is really strong. 
uh, when we were closed, we made a um, a chain. People took you know, the old paper chain thing, and we wrote love messages to our uh, staff and put them in the form of a chain, and they hung it in the the porch. <laughs> we love them. Thanks. That's adorable. I love that. That is so sweet. How did I miss that? <laughs> Nobody told me. About um, I wasn't able to go to the. Uh, forum thanks so much for bringing these back um and i sent the bag with the chain in it <laughs> but i don't know if anybody showed it off that's awesome i wasn't able to make the in-person one either sadly yeah nobody so thank you for doing this that. yeah mm -hmm. thank you for being here um we're definitely intending to keep this going on so, yeah, there'll be more. And it's nice to hear that we have got strong support on the board. That was a good move. Um, we have tried to invite the board member from Grace Harbor County to our meetings and have heard nothing back from her. So we are really, you know, we, do we have anyone? We have a regular um, last Tuesday of the month meeting we call it lunch for your brains and we have a speaker coming we will also have this available via zoom if anyone's interested i'll see if i can put something in the chat for you uh, this one will be one of our local police officers talking about how not to get scammed so we call this we say bring your lunch we'll provide coffee cookies and food for thought and we've been doing this for quite a few years now Thank cool. You. Yes, Thanks, Helen, um, please put that information in the chat and I will endeavor to come. I can't promise, but I will make every effort to come. And at least you have a, somebody there. I, I believe your trustee works full time. And, and so maybe it's just during the day, it's hard for them to get away. I don't know the whole story. But that's very, that. very possible. It just, I, we don't even know if the emails we sent got through to her. There was no acknowledgments. So Okay, well, when I when I when I see them at the next meeting, I will ask. How's that? Thank you. I, we haven't tried lately, so you know it could be it got buried. And I know she's had a, a real challenge with various um, job changes. Okay. Thanks, Helen. Okay. Uh, next on my list is Kathy. know if Kathy's there to I can't see a picture of Kathy but we'll give him a second to unmute hello yes yay I'm a member of the friends from the Ocean Park Library and we really appreciate the facelift the lovely paint job that we got recently it has it's just so beautiful it doesn't scream beach but it's really light and refreshing and just so much better than that old beige we love our library. Everybody here loves our library. And Yay. I have to be a member of the Friends. I don't hold office, but um, it's just it's just a wonderful organization, and we do a lot of things to help the folks in our area. That's wonderful. Thanks, Kathy. I'm glad you like that facelift. It's wonderful. Okay, uh, next on my list is Linda. Hmm. I thought I heard Linda, but now it looks like they're, you might be muted again, Linda. Can you hear me now? Yep, I can hear you now. Yep. Okay. Um, I'm Linda Hagelin. Um, I was with three friends groups, but I'm limiting it to two now, just Lacey and Packwood. Okay, well, thanks for your double service, previously triple service. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious that's great all right next on my list is pat give pat a sec oh there we go yes i'm uh with the friends of the olympia library uh i'm on the board i don't have a specific job i guess publicity i've been with the friends for 10 years and i worked at the olympia library for 28 years before that as a reference associate. I don't have my librarian's degree either. Um, our friends group has been rebuilding. We've uh, had a lot of changes and 
We're still working on um, getting, going ahead, <laughs> I guess is the best thing. We don't do the big sales anymore. We just have a, a large ongoing sale, uh, which uh, makes about 1000 to $1,200 a month, which is, you know, since we uh, charge a dollar for hard copy and a dollar, oh, let's see, a dollar, a dollar for paper, mass market paperbacks, we don't have it for uh, trade paperbacks, we charge a dollar for hard copies, we charge two dollars for some of the big formats are three or four dollars. So uh, we have a pretty brisk business there. And uh, we're still working on where uh, going forward. That's great. Aren't we all working on going forward? I think that's yeah. that's fabulous. Yeah. Continuous <laughs> improvement. <laughs> Trying to move forward. But the pandemic, that changed a lot of things. For sure. Well, I know that the Olympia staff really appreciated all of your support during the pandemic, too. They've mentioned that a lot. So, but thank you. See, the next friend on my list is Diantha. And actually, I think, Diantha, you might have been still logging on when I said that I wanted to introduce. I want to know who everyone was. So if you don't mind unmuting and introducing yourself, that would be lovely. Okay. Finally, I found a place to unmute. <laughs> I'm trying to do this on my cell phone, and this is kind of fun. Okay. I'm, I'm, we're in South Bend here. Uh, we have, uh, I'm a member of the South Bend Friends, but I've been going over to some of the Friends meetings from Raymond too. They also meet as well. We're both of us having book sales. So I have one, a book sale once a month, two days, the first weekend, uh, Saturday and Sunday from 10 to 3. And uh, my husband helps a lot. Um, the Panoyers, I think, in the, in the um, well, I, I, I'm I'm repeating all the stuff that's in the in the um, in the friends handout you gave over the weekend. Um, anyhow, we have a really good bunch of people here in our town supporting our beautiful Carnegie Library. 1913, it was built. We're really proud of it, and um, we've. Uh, uh, Ravenel Starica is the president of our group. Uh, Jenny Penoyer is the librarian here in Raymond and South Bend. And um, we've been getting grants. We're keeping on in the city in South Bend here, realizing that we are a, a popular group here, has uh, been helping us. We've been getting, we got a new, um, a bunch of new things done. We got a roof, a new roof on, finally a, a metal roof. Uh, the, the original plans called for a tin shingle roof, but we only had composition. So we finally got a grant and we put in a nice, beautiful um, metal roof. Um, we've been doing all kinds of work inside of it. And um, our friends group here is basically, uh, we're, we're uh, supporting the, um, the grants that they're seeking that uh, Ravenel has been doing and then the book sales too. Those are our two main activities. Anyhow, we've got a great bunch of librarians here too, uh, Chris and, and uh, Tori. And um, gee, I don't know what else to say right now, but. Uh, <laughs> That's anyhow. fabulous, thank you. Well, thank you for having this. Um, I really am glad we're starting to do this with all the groups here. You know, I was thinking uh, one of the things that we could do is help people get 501c3s. We got a 501c3 so we can get our grants. But if other groups can get a 501c3, they could also get, uh, get money for activities and projects, especially if they have to do some sort of work on the building. Um, there's also a, some sort of a uh, workshop with the post office so we can do mailings. Once you have a group, a friend's group, you could get a... a, a um, a, uh, a what do you call it? Um, a uh, mailing per permit. I don't know. A discounted, do discounted mailing permit, right? Yeah, get a mailing permit. Had some sort of a workshop on how to get a mailing permit. Um, let's see what else. Those are two things I'd like to see that Timberland could get together as a group. We could all do uh, learn a lot that way. Those are great suggestions. Thanks, Diantha. I noticed Kristen was writing those down. At least I'm guessing that's what they were doing. <laughs> okay. Great. I Thank wanted you. to. Yeah, thank you. I kind of for I'm a little remiss. I did want to do a really big shout out to Kristen and the rest of the staff for putting this together and the one. It was no small feat and they are amazing for coordinating all of this. So thank you so much for doing that. 
we wouldn't be able to do that without the, the work of our staff in that way. Mm -hmm. um, so just because I'm I'm not like running the show, Kristen totally is, but I'm I'm just curious and I wanna <laughs> I wanna make sure everyone helps. I thought I would just uh, point out some of the staff that we do have with us and what their role is, and that way in case for some reason you've got questions, you know a face that you could kind of point out to. Um, so I think Kristen mentioned before I'm the deputy director, Kendra, and I know I've met a couple of you um, over the past few years. Um, I also, I'm, I'm actually a children's librarian. I just say I'm a children's librarian in disguise because that's really most of my career is children's librarianship and now I wear a different hat, um, but that's definitely my history. And I know we have Christy who um, Kristen mentioned is our programming coordinator for the district. Wave Christy again so everyone sees you. Yay! <laughs> and we have Sarah Little who is one of our equity, diversity and inclusion coordinators. Um, and we have Jen or Jennifer Robertson, and she is our district manager for public experiences. She's also brand new and she's amazing. And we have Morgan Soul, who is a public services manager, and she oversees library managers in Lewis County, Thurston County, and that's it, just the two. <laughs> that's enough. <laughs> and I think, did I get everybody? Yeah, I got all the staff. Okay. Just wanted to make sure we had faces. And Kristen is, you go ahead and introduce yourself. Oh, I just wanted to add that all of us, um, all the staff who are here have worked in branches also. So like we've, we're all um, experienced in working with Timberland in many different areas. <laughs> like I used to work in Shelton as youth services associate. Um, and I know everyone else has had other experiences working in branches too. I just wanted to add that. Thanks, Kristen. That's, yeah, it is really important. And in fact, some of them even don't live, I think some people think all of our staff live in the Thurston County area, but that's not true. We have staff who live all over the place, including Kristen, I believe, and Sarah, who are not our, they don't live in Olympia. So we have a, a great, I think, diversity of experiences and, um, like lived experiences and work experiences uh, on our staff, which is what makes us so amazing. We are not super mighty in the dollar necessarily, but we sure are in staff. So it's pretty, pretty, we're pretty lucky. So I'll stop talking now, I swear, and we can take questions. <laughs> mm -hmm. hmm, let's see. Hmm. <laughs> If anyone has questions, you can feel free to ask them. Um, we also have some conversation starters. If anybody would prefer if I give you something to talk about. Um, I, guess I have see. a question. Yes, please. What is next door? Um, I don't know what that is. Well, Mary Beth, do you want to? Okay, go ahead. Yeah, can I talk about that? Thank you for asking the question. Um, okay, so Nextdoor is a, um, is a social media platform. Um, it works kind of the same way as Facebook and LinkedIn, but the difference between that and Nextdoor, and I actually am a representative of Nextdoor. I'm on their welcome committee. Um, so uh, what Nextdoor does, it's specifically for your smaller, a smaller community. And, and you'll see that on Nextdoor, thank you, Kristen, for putting that up. So on Nextdoor, you will see if the, somebody's dog got out or there's a cat, you'll hear that. Um, sometimes people will report on crime that's gone on in your community, unfortunately. Um, sometimes that tends, some Nextdoor columns, they tend to talk about that a lot. And that's not necessarily the only thing to talk about. Um, talks about what's going on. Like sometimes like down the street, there was a restaurant that was closed and there was some renovation going on. So people were like, so what's going on? So think of it as like a community gossip thing. Um, I don't mean gossip in a negative term, but just what's going on in your community. You can also post if you're offering something, if you're trying to sell something. Like for instance, we had a table and chairs that we were trying to get rid of. And so we posted that. And so people could come and, um, you know, pick it up or find out about it. So it's, but the the whole intention is that it's not the world, you're not posting on the world, you're just posting for your 
your small community. Thank you. Thank sure. you. So I have a question on when you said it's social media, is that an app or something or next door? Yeah. Uh, yes, there is a next door app, but I tend to use, I find it's much easier to just use your computer for, for next door. You know, some apps are easier to maneuver than others. Um, so yeah, I, I, um, you can just go to, and Kristen put it up on, uh, on the chat. It's just nextdoor.com and you can go there and then you have to register. Now, one thing to know, I found this out when we were in the process of moving from Dallas, you can only be in one next door at a time. So they really monitor that. So if you're, you know, if you're in the community, don't think that you can also be in the community, you know, down the street or something, you have to choose um, which community you want to, of the next door you want to be. And some are more robust and, than others. It just depends on the, your neighbors and whether they want to, um, they're on it as well. Yeah, we have a, we have a, in the area because they sell in some ways is connected to Schnook and all the, we call it the beach or the peninsula, which is Will Walk, or Long Beach, Ocean Park, um, all that area. And um, and sometimes South Bend Raymond. So they're on Facebook. There is a cyber watch that will um, address things like, um, you know, someone is, someone was, walking around their house with a flashlight late at night, things like that. And then it also, um, there's one that's for the area for um, buying stuff, which I don't, I'm not in, but I've seen it. Um, if you're selling something, but it includes Nacelle and it includes the whole beach area. So, um, well, yeah. Sometimes, my, sometimes ne next door can be even smaller than your small, city it might be just like three or four blocks of your community it just depends on how they've set your um your area up okay well we're not we're unincorporated and sale is so um and we we have interesting blocks that go on forever and some are very short so it's it's a, it's a very small area yeah <laughs> So you'll just you just have to go to next door and figure out what they have um, how they have set that up for you. But yeah, it's a it's a great it's a great service for everybody. And Christy pointed out too that's true service recommendations as well. If you're trying to you know hire a contractor to do some work for you, um, just like Yelp and some other rec reviews, they people can say yay you need to use this person or unfortunately no try to stay away from this person. So it's well, again, just neighbors helping neighbors. Yeah, we were yeah, but we're small, so it's word about mouth. You know. So, so I just signed up for next door through my Facebook account just now, mm -hmm. and gave and all it does is add ask for your address and stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, like you said, Mary Beth, mm -hmm. probably making sure that I'm not trying to join too many communities here. But yeah, so it was really easy to do. I just did it. While we were all talking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm on next door. Um, do you think next door could be used for announcing um, meetings like like the Friends of the Library? Yes, absolutely. You you yeah, definitely. Um, anything that again, if it just think of it, if it's something that you want your neighbors to know about. Um, yeah, definitely. So you could use that as well for that purpose. Uh -huh. There we go. There are people that monitor next door, just like on uh, Facebook or anything. So if somebody were to say something that was inappropriate or, mm -hmm. or, you know, you don't want it to get into any, any uh, dissension between neighbors or anything like that. They try to keep it as positive as possible. So that, that does happen, but your friends, um, your friends would definitely any, any programs. One of the things I, and I'm just saying this, not as a trustee, but just as somebody who loves a library, when I see that um, in the TRL handbook, like I mentioned that they're, Tumblr is offering this or something like that. 
I will take that information and I will post it on next door because again, I want as many people to know about it as possible. And there are a lot of people who do not get the, the TRL um, or the Tumwater, uh, you know, uh, newsletter or things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, that's another um, thing that could be maybe working on how to do a newsletter. I've been looking online and basically they all seem to have email type newsletters. They don't talk about print newsletters, but I know a number of like, like older people that really don't do much online. So a print newsletter does get through to them. I, I could respond to that. This is Linda. Yeah, hi, Linda. Hi, um, I started our newsletter um, and I use Publisher. Um, and that's a question I do have for the library is it's kind of difficult to get in if you want to join a friends or find out about a friends group or or if you're in a friends group and want to contact another group like you know you have a question specifically how are you you know how are you raising money or could we do a combined event and put our heads together to come up with some idea to raise money for something um but when you click friends it just tells you call your library i'm wondering two things because i'll get back to that newsletter one could there be help would there be help from trl that you could open up your branch page and click on the new on a newsletter so that you would go instantly to a newsletter and is there a way that friends groups could go into some listing of at least maybe one representative or something or the president of a friends group or a secretary to to make contact instead of having to call the library and maybe the librarians don't know can i give out that information um and with so many trl services libraries being you know open after hours it's sometimes more helpful for people to you know i'm right i want to write a letter at midnight you know <laughs> you have quite a time um so any anything along those lines happening via trl I can put together a, a list of contacts um, for the presidents of the Friends of the Library, and I can share that with everybody, and um, I can ask if we can put it on the website. Um, well, and I think I want to make, make, if I get any of this wrong, Linda, just let me know if I didn't hear some part, but something really exciting that I didn't talk about that's happening next year is we're getting a new website and the functionality of the website is going to be even better than what we have now and it will let um, like library managers customize their location pages a little bit more easily and do some more things there and I'm thinking that like having the contact information like right there really easy will probably that'll probably be a lot better on our newer website and and if anything changes right like a friend's president you know leaves and somebody else comes on the library manager will be able to just go in and make that change instead of it having to go up through a request and and now the way our website is it's a lot harder to make changes on the website and so we mm. have just a small group of people who are doing that so we don't i think i'm guessing i'm having a hunch that that's probably why we don't have a ton of specifics on each of the branch page now we just have general like when you go to that location page it talks about friends of the library in very general terms and then like you said says call your local library for information and i bet they don't do specific stuff there because it would require a lot of updating as friends members change but so i i'm glad you wrote it down christine because i think that's probably something that with with the new website um would, would be a, an improvement mm -hmm. okay it maybe i'll just finish this i can't remember was it was it diantha was it you that was asking about the the newsletter paper newsletter yeah, uh huh. That's, I was thinking she's talking about an online newsletter, and that's important. That's good, especially for if we're all going to communicate with each other about it. Sort of a group newsletter for the whole friends of of Raymond, is that friends of friends of Timberland? But um, individual, uh, I've had uh, I've turned up a, a small newsletter, just one page, one side, a couple of times, and it was helpful here, um, mobilizing and getting people to um, get out and support the library. We had a we had a big meeting a few years back that was really a, a cloud buster of a meeting. And that really helped get the president, get the mayor back of us, uh, back, uh, get, get to get her backing us. So I think a print newsletter actually is a way that can be, I know it's old fashioned, it's old, old hat um, and it's, and it's work, 
and it has to be mailed out too. That's another thing also. Yeah, um, I can, if you like, um, we can exchange numbers. I can show you what I had put up and I use publisher because I could put photos on it and then I could add a lot. It's, I think it's kind of rather splashy. I looked at a number of friends' newsletters in, you know, even Virginia and other places. I could send you this um, if you like, and we could chat a little bit more. Publisher does take, if you want to go splashy, does take a little bit more because you're able to move things around the page more as opposed to something like Word where you you're limited to where a paragraph is going to go so um if you'd like and it does take some time but once i got into it it it, it was a lot easier uh, it might also be a nice collective get a buddy kind of thing and and but we've had then our group uh submits photographs we use it as a four-page brag sheet kind of thing um things of what it ha what has happened um in the year uh of uh, uh um a book of recommendation, that kind of thing, or or and another mm -hmm. service. One we highlighted the mm -hmm. the little playaways as one, and then one of the other websites. Because if you say go to a database online, people go what what database, <laughs> you know that kind of thing. Anyway, so so you and I could connect. What library are you with? And then I'll just I'll get off the line. Diantha, where's your library? South Bend. South Bend. Oh, I love going mm -hmm. through there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, um, and uh, what you're from, uh, Tumwater? Um, it's Lacey, but this this was with the uh, Packwood Library. Okay. So That's I'll amazing. I'll I'll get in. I'll, how is it okay if you could give me your email at this point, or would you rather a phone number? It's, it's just my name. Um, that my my full name with small letters at okay. outlook.com. At out, outlook.com. Outlook.com. That's that's uh huh. Okay. Okay. Very cool. Because I like to keep the the post office. I'm a firm believer in the paper. I mean, I communicate with just letters and postcards across the country, and we'll keep that post office in business. So I'm done here. So I <laughs> okay. <laughs> got, a, got a comment. You said um, that these have to be mailed out. Yeah, but it sure makes a difference having a stack of them in your library because people who go into libraries read. I have yes. a, a comment yes. about posters. This is the old fashioned way. And yes, all the new stuff is wonderful, but the old fashioned doesn't hurt either. So mm -hmm. this is a poster that we made for our talk. You'll notice it's on colored paper. It's cheap because it's black print on colored paper. So I can run them off, you know, for 10 cents a piece at the library for free. Um, and I've, I've learned on our copy machine how to make them quarter size. You can do it. I don't, each machine is different. And then I, so I have the regular size posters and I have a personal size poster. And that works really great for those people who want to take it home and put it on the refrigerator or on the calendar or stick it in whatever. Um, but this is this is another way yes we've got to get on neighborhood we've got to get on all these others but this reminding people in the local restaurant um in the window of the liquor store was a good place to put them too <laughs> uh sometimes you could have a pile of the little ones on the counter in whatever store you chose mm -hmm. Well, I'll brag a little bit for Linda because she makes a mighty fine um, newsletter that we put it in oh. our coffee shop. We have our own little bookstore that we have there where we have a little money jar or box that people can donate money to the library and we have books set up and um, Linda's um, newsletter is there and um, yeah, people yeah. are taking them. So yeah. and our coffee shop is quite a busy place in Packwood. <laughs> Fantastic ideas, both. Thank you. I'm going to use them. Uh, we've got a coffee shop here in the town here that is the, supports the library. They sell our shirts. Oh, and um, I think they wouldn't mind having a few books there with a, just the thing saying donations. Mm -hmm. So I, this is Cheryl. 
I mean, um, I have been um, six years with the friends because I couldn't belong to the friends when I was working. <laughs> I helped them, but I couldn't belong. <laughs> but um, so I'm a little, does the library uh, here has publisher and word because I don't have it myself. So I'm just curious. But I like the I like the idea of the yellow because that stands out with the dark print um, letters. That's that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I always post the in, in, um, uh, flyers around South Bend around here. The grocery store and the post office are the two main places in our town that everybody gets information at. You meet your friends there and you sit there talking in the grocery store for about 20 minutes or so. <laughs> Anyhow, that, that, that's, it's a great place to communicate things. They have a poster, a big poster board. Uh, so I want, you can do that in the library. And I want to point out that Jen put in the chat another option that doesn't require any kind of a software download called Canva, canva.com. It's really pretty easy to use. Um, what is it it's called? called it's Canva. C-A-N-V-A. -C Canva. Like a canvas, like you write on a canvas, but just take that S off and then do dot .com. Hmm. And it's something that you can just do from any internet connection anywhere. So if you had a hard time getting access to publisher or something, um, that, that's another option. And I just wanted to point it out oh. and put it in the chat. Okay. I'll put that out about Canada. If if you're making a poster, there are options. If you're doing newsletter, not so great. If you're trying to use their templates for brochures and newsletters, they're very limiting as far as where your items can be placed. But yes, for for a poster, um, that's great or or a handout. But you know, not the best for newsletters. And you have to pay. It's there's partly free and then paid for you know, a more advanced options, but yeah, yeah. Right, there are free options. So Michelle um, Zilly, the library manager at New does a beautiful job with posters for us, for our friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she uses Canva, so there you go. <laughs> you <know>? oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and I will point out to, um, you're right, doing newsletters can be a little trickier on Canva. Our, I belong to Peace Choir, and they do their newsletters through there because they find it a little bit easier. But I think it depends on what you're looking for, you know, like depending on what you want it to look like when it's printed. So that's a good point, Linda, to bring up that you got to look at what it is that you want before you figure out the tool. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was just, whoa. Check his email. Ah, here we are. Fantastic. I just was looking on my computer here and I found publisher right here. Woohoo! Download your template, email newsletter. Da, 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 da. Okay. Hey, we're on our way. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> Uh, Diana, this is Linda again. I'll send you a copy of what I had done, um, and I'll let you know that then through email. Um, we can, okay. I can, I can get your address. So it'll be just like getting it from the post office, you know. <laughs> and and then I can help. I can help kind of if you need some extra help walking you through or giving you support because it it can be a little daunting in the beginning if you're used to let's say Microsoft Office. But yeah, yay, that's... you got it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, great. Um, do you want a PO box number two or something? Or oh, yeah. if you if you're willing to give that out, everybody else, plug your ears. Go ahead, Diantha. Right. Why not? <laughs> PO box one zero eight zero. What was that? One zero eight zero. Correct. One zero eight zero South Bend. Yep. Nine eight five eight six. Five eight six. Okay, okay. It'll be in the mail tomorrow. Oh, fantastic! Thank you, thank you. You're very welcome. Okay. On our way here, folks. Man. All right. So I have a question about chat. Does that stay or does it go when the this is over with? 
I can I can jump in. If you look on the on the bottom where your um, where you post some information on the right hand corner, there are three dots. If you select that, and I tend to do this at the end of the conversation, it'll save it'll save your uh, the chat. So if there's any um, links or something that you want to make sure that you remember, and just so you know, when it's saved, um, it'll go directly into your computer. And it will be a text message. So it's that old dot matrix that some of us who are old enough remember where there's no there's no formatting or anything. It's just a bunch of words. So um, you may have to clean it up a little bit, but that's a way to save the chat messages on Zoom on this if platform. I, if I share it to myself, would that work? Is that what the share is? I don't see the three dots. Um, look on the very, are you on the chat right now? Yes. Okay, if you look at the very bottom where you would actually be typing in a comment, um, it's yes. right, right there on the far right hand side next to the smiley face. And if you, you click on that, the first option is save chat. You just do that and it will automatically save it into your, um, okay. onto your computer. And, and basically when you go back into your computer, look for something that says meeting chat. And that will yeah, I, don't, I don't see a smiling face either. Oh. Hmm. I just say ever to everyone and then type message here at the bottom. Right. It, it's on the far right. I don't know why you don't see that. Well, I don't have a very big screen. Maybe I'll my move my screen over. Yeah, move your screen over. That should be it. No, it doesn't show it still. Keep moving. <laughs> well, it's it's done. Because I um I I'm on a laptop. So for one. Yeah, I don't see it. Sorry. <laughs> Do you see the times that each person filled in in the chat above? In the, so you see um, Mary Beth. I, I, oh, I see a, oh, I see a scroll. Sorry. So I see 203 for when she talked or put that in. And this be in line with the three dots. No, let's see. I can see a scroll thing, but I can't. It won't move. So, Cheryl, on mine, um, it says I can do a, when I highlight on chat, it, it gives a, even a private message to Morgan if I want to. Then there's a smiley face. And after the smiley face on the top there, there's three little dots. And if you click on those little dots, it says save. I don't, chat. Yeah, I don't see that, but I'm going to see if I can highlight. I can highlight. Okay. I'll save the chat for everybody, and I can send it to all the friends after the meeting's over. <laughs> don't worry. You'll I, I highlighted it. Again. So, let's see what happens. Thank you. No, I was I was with. Um, let's see, am I showing? I um, I worked for Tim Owen when Alice was around, which is a long time ago, <laughs> 1988. So. All right. Does anybody else have anything they'd like to ask or anything you want to talk about? Um, I can also make some suggestions if you'd like. Um, let me know. I'll mute myself again, see if anybody has anything to say. I have, I have another comment. This is Linda. I, I just besides book sales and at you know at, at the library itself or at a little satellite spot, what what other things have you, especially like in the smaller libraries branches outside of uh, Olympia, Lacey, Tumwater, what have you done for fundraising throughout the year for your library other than uh, book sales?
Uh, anybody? Anybody? <laughs> no, um, Bueller. Yeah, Bueller. <laughs> this show. Basically, we do one book sale a year. There's, there's only about five of us right now. Um, and one works full time. The rest of us are retired. <laughs> so um, we do have a, we purchased um, a small bookcase. Well, it's tall. And we have a donation box on top that's with, locked with a key. And um, we have a sign there. So we do, do, we're doing it by donation right now. So we periodically put new books there, or actually not new books, but new used books, the donated books. And, um, and that's at the right right in the hallway, the foyer, right next to the telephone that people can use um, to reach the local area. Um, and off and on, we do pretty good. Um, haven't really, uh, not the treasure, so I haven't really gone in, haven't seen how we do a full year, how we've done with that. But um, the book sales vary. We um, started, um, there's a, uh, archives, um, Mesa Archives, that, which is a, a small cafe that's only open a very short time, three days a week, and then um, there's a museum there. So it's the, um, it, it's, uh, they have books in Finnish that you can check out <laughs> that are all in Finnish, a language, um, and they have um, different history books they also have the archive has a lot of local pictures and and different things and so um i think that's open a little more and they have um so that the area they have used to be a, a store a long time ago and so there is um like a sort of a porch that goes the full length because it has another business there and the water companies there with doors. And then, so, um, and it has a cover. And so we've had our book sales there because um, they, they let us use their um, tables. We bring a few of our own, but basically tables. And then we can cover that because we're all under cover. And we actually have an odd closet that um, the man that he's passed now, um, Apollos, who started all this, um, allowed of the friends to have that closet area and to put books for us, our sale free. And they have never, they still don't charge us. So we have a place to store. It's not that big, but we have a place to store things. So, which is nice. And it's nice because it's attached, it's in that building. And they don't charge us um, for the use of the, uh, the space we're using in the cover. Um, and we have to work with them when we have a sale, but it's so far has worked out pretty good. Can I Our biggest problem at the moment is storage space. Yeah. In the past, we've gone away now from doing the, the big sales. We have an upstairs uh, sh bookshelves where we can put some books. Uh, during the summer, Montesano had a Saturday morning market. And we could have a space for free. We found that having a job for volunteers brought out more volunteers. So we had some people who did once a month or who came in once during the, the fest, the Saturday market, we took our, it involved a lot of Holland stuff. Uh, fortunately, we were able to get some younger people and some uh, husbands to help. Uh, we borrowed a tent and set that up when we needed it. And we had tables that we could, uh, at least three or four people in this town, I'm sure, have got more than one table from Costco of those folding varieties. And we keep our box, our books, our extra books in boxes that are 
the old Avon boxes. So they're all the same size. And we just go down and grab oh, a dozen of those boxes. They're not too impossible to handle and spread them out. We le often left the books in the boxes of stuff and that that seemed to help we made like two hundred dollars a week oh wow which was sure better than nothing um it was also an excuse to get to the market uh we'd have three or four people working two three people anyway so and it was always a quiet enough time so we could uh, go see what else was for sale at the market mm. we've gone to the uh, give a donation for in exchange for the book rather than asking for a set price and the first times everybody is going oh my library I love my library and they give maybe more than what you'd expect and then that temp it may taper off but it sure beats having to price all the books as far as getting rid of books I've got a couple of things that you might like to know about. There are times when we have had to get rid of books, old encyclopedia sets, books that smell. Um, and I've discovered that the Aberdeen Lions Club and the Union Gospel Mission both accept books that then they will sell for pulp. I hate to say it. But oh. at least they're not taking up landfill and they're coming back as more books. Um, you might look around and, and see if you've got some people closer to you who are likewise doing that. Well, with an old book would still have value, but it does. With the Mesa Library, um... We, um, we do have a nice turnout because a lot of people love to help with the, the sale. They get first but, choice. Yes, and, but to getting them to come to the meeting is another matter. But we have three that, because um, we do collect dues, but we have um, in Skamakaway, um, we have a place that we can actually take mixed paper, mm -hmm. which means books. Because mm -hmm. um, I remember it used to going all the way to Longview, um, but and so um, we have someone that um, two people that love to do that part. Anything that we left, we go through. But uh, um, we have we don't mark each book. We have signs up that's we we do it um, hardback a dollar, uh, fifty cents paperback, and then some of them. We do bags for the Harlequins, you know, bag for whatever price. And the last day we knock prices down, but we have the signs all over. And the children's are a different price also. And depending, and then the people that are sitting behind collecting money and taking um, that are, are allowed to, um, at their discretion, do a price if they feel it would be better. Then we have one specific table that is um, books that we price at various prices because of what they are. And this last sale we had, we had several gentlemen, different ages. One came back three times just before we closed because he had thought about this one book and he wanted to make sure it was still there. <laughs> so it was on our special table. It was all about the special table. We sold almost everything on it, just about because there were quite a few people that came back and a group, a couple ladies, three of them, um, they came back three times. They went and had lunch because we don't have one restaurant in town and we're within walking distance of that one restaurant. And they came, uh, came back three times because they had started to think that there was a few things, other things they wanted to get. <laughs> so you never know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so it's it's nice to we have certain people that just love to help with the sales, but we ran into the Wakaikan County Fair this time when we had our sale and a few other things that um, we there were a lot of people that might have been there that weren't able to because of the fair. Mm -hmm. 
because a lot of people in our area go to that fair instead of Pacific County Fair. Ah. You don't and, uh, Linda, was the one who asked the question about um, what people do for fundraising. So um, I'm going to brag about Packwood for just a few minutes be before we lose a lot of other people here. But um, in April, we do a thing called Fool Around with Friends. And um, it's a bake sale and a silent auction and our book sale. And in order to um, draw people to come in, we had um, the Reptile Man, which brought in about 150 to 175 people into the building. And once they come in, they'll see the food for sale and they'll buy it or they'll see the books, they'll buy it, they'll see the silent auction and they'll bid on it. And we also had, um, the, it was Earth Day that month, you know, so we have the Forest Service come in and they talk about um, Earth Day and we have a little photo booth so that the kids can go and take books, pictures of themselves with a, their favorite book or whatever. And so that's a fundraiser that we we did last year and we hope to continue to do. And then we also do the farmer's market and we set up right next to the library at the market so that when the people come up, we can brag about what the library does. And, and so bragging, um, we, we get more funds that way because they can see firsthand the library and, and the beauty of the library and what, what um, it has to offer. And then to just add a little more interest, sometimes I have my husband sitting there singing with his guitar case open or my granddaughter came and she played her viola and made $100 for us one day. And um, then or we'll have um, certain little things like Linda went and got a bunch of books together that was like a grab bag kind of thing. So just, you know, for a dollar, you could, you could fill up as many books as possible that the bag would hold. And, um, and so we just try to add interest to it so that people will um, be attracted to it and come more. And this year we're, we're, we've come up with some ideas of, um, you know, in November um, meeting at a different location than the library to try to draw in um, community members to be our friends. So we're doing the brewery and we're gonna focus on being thankful because it's November. And then um, February will be love your library kind of thing. Mm -hmm. and, and so um, those are just a few little ideas that we have done that I thought I would share for you guys. Nice. If, but we're also looking for more ideas. So um, yeah, creativity is um, the key, I think, in drawing people when it comes to raising money because um, mm -hmm. there's so many people who need money. <laughs> there's so yeah. many people who want their money. So. Well, I love those ideas because one of the things you want to do is you want to figure out what kind of fundraiser that you can have and own that in your community. And obviously the tie in with the library is really, really good. Speaking for the Tumwar Library, I know many of you do this as well. I know that they have book bags, which is, a, you know, it's a simple thing, but um, I love the idea definitely to focus on th th uh, November to say thanks and to um to uh, February, which I think National Volunteer uh, National um, Library Week is in February, like around February fourteenth or something, or it's it's Love a Book Day or something like that. I think that's fantastic. One thing that Helen said that I don't want I want to make sure everybody heard or say this is that she said having more opportunities for people to volunteer. I know that when you're a very small group, you know, like three or four or five or something. You're like, oh my gosh, we can't do any more. But the thing is, it's con it's it's kind of an adverse reaction is that the more things you have going on, the more things that people want to participate and they find different things that they can do. Some of you were talking about the newsletter and some of you may say, well, that's a really great idea, but I don't have time or I don't have an inclination to do that. Well, I promise you there's somebody in your community who wouldn't, who would love the opportunity to write a newsletter. So um, volunteer management is kind of my thing. So just making sure that you understand is instead of having a list of things that people can do to volunteer, ask them what they want to do. So, you know, people who want to haul books, that's great. People who want to 
do your newsletter, that's something. Having people who want to post and information on social media is another thing. Having people who want to create events, there's always people who like throwing parties or baking goods or something like that. So um, making sure that you have a lot of diverse different things that people can participate in so that they have feel like they can contribute to your group and be part of your group. Um, to keep for us, this is Linda again, speaking for Packwood. Um, another thing we did is we got green, dark green pencils and had friends of the Packwood Library printed on it so that when people are signing up, because we have sign up sheets at our lovely decorated tables at the farmer's market. So people go home with one or two or three. Um, so they'll then have that constant reminder that, hey, um, oh yeah, friends. So the pencil had one on it, just friends? Uh, I, um, friends of the Packwood Library. Okay. She, and I looked, I shopped around. If you like, I could send you the name of the company. I spent a lot of time deciding what, what item to get. And this was very inexpensive. And uh, I got like three gross of pencils uh, just for a, an amazing amount of money. So, yes, uh, if you could send me the email, I'll, I'll give you my email. Sure, Cheryl, go ahead. Okay, it's all lowercase, and I'll say it first. It's Ohio Heart at gmail.com. So it's O H I O H A R T at gmail. I was born in Ohio, so that's why I use it. <laughs> okay, okay, great. I'll, I'll get that information um, out to you. And I'll include a little picture of what our pencil looks like, too. Oh, that'd be perfect. Thank you. Can you put it in the chat, the information, or? I'm um, not right now because I don't have it on me. Gotcha. I, I actually have to tell you, I, I know my son taught me how to do a control C to copy after you highlight and control, control V to post. So I've been doing that with the chats that come. So I was able to do it and send it to me because I can go compose. I can do two screens which I couldn't do before, so I'm learning. But I like the pencil or whatever it's that, because people like like pencils and pens, I know for sure. Um, Helen, do you want to give me in a way I can contact you? Sure. S, I'll, I'll do like she did, the whole thing first. Shep, that's with two H's, at centurytel.net. So it's S for Steve, H for Helen in front of HEP, S-H-H-E-P-P. -P. Century. Uh -huh. Centurytel.net. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay, I'll do that as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, a little thing we did was uh, we, my mom had a bay bush and it was needing to be trimmed. So I dried the leaves, put them in a, a sandwich bag. It needed to be an open sandwich bag. So they they were dry, but they weren't always totally dry. Um, and sold them for, buy a bag a bay a buck for books. <laughs> it, was, it was just a little something, you know, we could haul to the uh, friends forum and walk around with a basket of them. It was something people could use. How did, how did you say it? A what? A bag? Buy a bag, a bay, a buck. Oh. <laughs> I did, um, I have an herb garden, so I put bouquets of herbs together, and we put all our cookbooks out for sale. And um, and so they, if they, they bought my little bundle of herbs, then they could get a free cookbook. <laughs> And it seems like we always have a lot of cookbooks to share. Speaking of that, um, a way of getting rid of books too, one of the things we've done too is taking our cookbooks to the um, food bank and let just letting them have them. Um, I also, we have um, a visitor center 
And so books that are um, more focused around the area and stuff like that, we have been gracious to share our books that we get donated with them so that they can raise some funds for the visitor center as well and just kind of help um, help the community in a whole. The museum, we, we sometimes give them the, the history books that um, pertain to that area. And um, yeah, and then our thrift store is one, one of our biggest givers. They'll, they'll save some of, their, of the best selling kind of books and give to us to, um, to put out for us to be able to um, raise more funds. Wonderful. This has been very productive. Thank you, everybody. Yes, thank you. You all have such excellent ideas. And I'll also, um, if anybody wants to use the new TRL Friends of the Library logo to print on items um, to give away or sell, I'll send those um, image files to everybody. Um, so if you want to use them, you can, but you certainly don't have to. If you have your own logo or images in mind, uh, feel free to use that. <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. Great. Does anyone else have anything you want to talk about? Or? Talking about images with the new card, new cards that are out. Mm -hmm. Um. When I was working, can you see this card? Yeah. That, was, that was one of them that I got a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But I'm keeping it so because I really like it. Huh. I remember, but that's okay. But yeah. <laughs> Very cool. I don't know what I don't know what year that was, but um I thought I'd better get one for myself. I was working before they were, they changed them, you know, they just, which they eventually discontinued that one. I mean, they, you know, you can still use it, but mm -hmm. you can't get it. So, but the new cards look neat. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Very cool. Anybody else have anything you want to talk about or share or anything? I want to say that the um, the possibility of uh, with the herbs might be a nice idea, um, and also um, the um, having a bag you know, filling it in a certain, I would say maybe the the last day of the sale um, is um, you get an, a, a nice bag, if you can figure that out, or a bag and fill it with books at a, at a certain cost. That's a good idea, I think. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to excuse myself. Wish you all well and hope we meet again before too long. Yes. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And real, real quick, I'm still here. So, um, so Montesano is um, getting a new library and that's Randall, right? The town of Randall. Or am I got that mixed up? No, you're really, you've got the town correct. It's um, called the Mountain View Library. Okay. And, because uh, the location will be the, near the um, school, the White Pass School there, which serves oh, okay. Randall and Packwood. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I, I didn't this year, but for five years, I went up with a group of ladies and we camped um, at Gifford Pinchot National Forest and picked wild huckleberries for two weeks and got our limit and we would um, go into town and we'd always 
go to the library and use the services. Either go in the library if they're open or sit outside and use the Timberland services to connect with people. So it's it's a it's a very small, but it's a, it's what it's with the space they had. It, the, they did a good job, but they'll be excited to see a new building. Yes, they they do a lot with not very much space. That's for sure. Right, it's so much nice to have something because you know that that used to be a different kind of thing. You know, it wasn't always a library. Of course, it was a business, and mm -hmm. anytime you yeah. do something like that. You're trying to squeeze into something that wasn't meant for you. So it'll be great to have something that's custom. It's meant to be a library and it's fresh. Yes. And wonderful. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for being here. I'll leave it open one more minute to see if anyone else has anything else you want to add. Um, but otherwise, I'll go ahead and let you all go and wrap things up and say that this has been a wonderful, productive meeting. And I'm so glad that we got to do this. And yeah, thank you for being here. Well, thank you for having it. I've always been a person, but this this has been really nice. So I'm glad. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Okay. All right. So, Kristen, I'm not sure if my message went to you, but um, thank you for um, hosting. You are a great hostess. Then. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I'm not sure how to send. I'll maybe figure oh. it out before I go here. But... <laughs> no worries. All right. Okay. All right, honey. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. All right. All right, I'm going to close things out and say thank you so much for being here. All right. Thanks, thank Kristen. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.